Hello everyone, I'm Sean, and welcome to My Han Shigan, the best place on the internet for one hour natural English listening. As always, this video contains both English and Korean subtitles for you to follow along with as you're listening. 그리고 저는 요즘 멤버십 프로그램을 하고 있는데 새로 영상을 올릴 때마다 영어 대본과 한영 자막을 자유롭게 설정할 수 있는 영상도 멤버들에게 올려드릴게요. 관심 있으시면 아래 설명을 참고해 주세요. In this video, we discussed a lot of interesting topics, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Without further ado, let's begin. Hi, how's it going? Where are you from? I'm from America, and I'm Christina. Great. <laughs> so what are some things these days that are becoming more socially acceptable than they were in the past? Definitely like in social media. You know, the bar is set so high in entertainment, like people get bored really easily. Mm. And especially now with platforms like TikTok and um, Instagram, it's only like a few seconds long or like, you know, it's quite short. Like people just want short, really good comedy. And I think because of that, like people are just going all out in their content. I've seen like on TikTok and also like on Instagram, they'll do something crazy. They'll run into a really busy area and they'll like start pretending like they have a seizure or like they'll scream. That's become comedy now, mm -hmm. I feel like in a lot of social media platforms. Whereas I feel like back then, if people started doing that, a lot of people would be like, wow, this guy's like a jerk. That's so rude. But now like people are just praising them and they're becoming celebrities mm -hmm. nowadays. Yeah, that's a great point. Like even in Korea, there's like Wule camera. Yeah, like, Wule camera. The, the, the hidden <laughs> camera and like the stimulus, the stimulation yeah. bar is set so high. You have to do something absolutely Crazy. ridiculous to get yeah. views these days. Exactly. People are so desensitized to it. Yeah. And you only have like a few seconds to capture their attention. You can see this too in like, you were saying Instagram, like there's tons of like Instagram models too. Right. Men and women, like they have crazy six packs or like just the crazy bikini body. It's socially acceptable to like take these super sexy, amazing pictures mm. as like a job. Yeah. Like your family, your mother, your father would be like, oh yeah, honey, have a nice day at work. And the daughter would be like, thanks, I'll, I'll be home tonight for dinner. She <laughs> takes a bunch of like crazy, sexy you know, like pictures and then comes home and eats dinner. Oh, you, did you have a nice photo shoot? It's just like, yeah. <laughs> that's what we have to do yeah. for marketing and advertisement. It's Because true. it's such a competitive market. Like you have to do anything to be noticed these days. That's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. And also I feel like um, it's also like more socially accepted to like use Photoshop and like mm. Facetune and like these like editing apps. You so know? many. Snow? Like, is that what it's called? Oh yeah, Snow. Snow. Yeah, really popular in Asia. Like and that's just like so normalized to kind of edit and like have like a perfect, you know, like S-line body and like really edit out any imperfections. And because of that, like, it, you know, kind of gives like a false, false image of like what they really are. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's quite socially acceptable now, you know, compared to like back then, I feel like more people would call them out on it. The crux of what we're talking about right now, of mm -hmm. this conversation could be like, it's more socially acceptable now to make money and to do business mm -hmm. in any by any means necessary yeah, than it was in the past. As long as you're not hurting anybody, right, doing something exactly. outwardly illegal. Yeah. Like you yeah. can make money showing your body, doing something where you almost kill yourself. Right. Doing, doing crazy, crazy stunts. stunts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and whereas maybe I would imagine 50 years ago, people would be like, that's no way to make a, earn a living. That's yeah. no way to make money. But these yeah. days it's just like, you know, it's hard out here. So we, exactly. we have to make money by any means necessary. Right, right. Is there anything else you wanted to discuss? Yeah. Cancel culture. Okay. Cancel culture. What does that oh mean my to gosh. you? I don't know. There's like the, just this like magnifying glass, like on a lot of influencers and people online, they're digging up dirt from like years and years ago. And they're just like 
cancel, cancel this person, you know? It's just becoming like acceptable to kind of do that, you mm -hmm. know? And just like not forgiving like any mistakes. Like of course, like I think people should be accountable. Like if they've done something really wrong, then they should, you know, know that what they did was wrong and change. But the thing is, is like, that's the point. You should change and grow, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like nowadays, like people aren't allowing people to change and grow. Mm -hmm. It's just like they they want to like cancel completely. So I think like that's just becoming socially acceptable. And nowadays, I feel like anyone who makes it on YouTube is just very vulnerable to like get canceled, like very easily. You know, nowadays there's always like there's always like a YouTuber or influencer that has like some some type of like scandal that gets like dug up and like people just like really attack them. Mm. So yeah, I've been seeing that all the time nowadays, the cancel culture. Scary, right? It's scary. It makes me like be like, oh, should I like put myself out there on YouTube? But you know, it's what I want to do too. Mm. So and I hope like it changes a little bit because I, you know, of course, like if someone's doing something bad, hold them accountable, okay? But like it's, good to forgive and if that person like was like hey i made a mistake i'm really sorry like i'm going to change and they you do see improvement in their attitude then we should like forgive them you know great point we're only human we all make mistakes right right yeah there's not enough conversation in regards to forgiveness and yeah. atonement for past sins mm. that's so true because people do make mistakes and like to be held accountable for something that's relatively trivial that happened maybe 20 years ago yeah, is not fair. People grow, people change. And okay, maybe they did make a mistake, you know, or maybe what they said back then was socially acceptable and now it's not, you know, mm. that's another piece to this puzzle. Yeah. So I totally agree. Like, I think uh, cancel culture is very toxic. So toxic. Canceling someone's entire career because they did a small thing or, one of my favorite sayings is throwing out the baby with the bathwater. You're just throwing out the entire mm. bathwater and the baby's still in it. So there's so much goodness still in this. Mm. But you're, you're just doing it because there's a small imperfection. I see that a lot too. But yeah. sometimes it is necessary. So yeah, at times it, it is. It is a case so by case thing. It's case by case, yeah. yeah, for sure. Find out what happened, get the story. I think like a lot of times also people are getting canceled and it's like completely false, you know, false story or, you know, a false statement. They didn't really do something. But like, even if it is a false statement and it comes to light that the person's accusations were, were wrong, I almost feel like the damage is already done. It is. It's so, hard to go back. Yeah. It's very damaging. The, the video that accuses person A of this thing will have 10 times as many views as the video uh, admitting that this accusation was mm. actually false. Yeah. People are not gonna watch that. So that's a big danger in you know social media in, the, in today's society. So anyway. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Hopefully it changes. Right. Thank you so much. This was very interesting. Yeah, it was a very interesting topic. Right on. I had fun today. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, how's it going? Where are you from? Hello, I'm Paul Sol. I'm from Canada. What are some things that are becoming more and more socially acceptable as time goes on? People are starting to do more home parties in Korea. Hmm. So maybe it's because of like where I live in the neighborhood, but I've noticed, of course, like people want to go out and go drink in bars, you know, it's still the preference. But you know, when there was like more like severe lockdowns, I've noticed that, you know, like the neighbors on Friday or Saturday nights, they had friends over mm. for like, I think the first time. Is that something you've noticed or is it just me? Yeah, I would say so, definitely. If someone has the house to facilitate right, that. Right, 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 right. But house parties for sure, I've heard of that becoming more and more popular for sure. So that's like one thing that changed. Another thing that changed, and this is something like I noticed, especially in my neighborhood was so many dogs. People are stuck in the house all the time, so they're bored. So they get dogs. 
-hmm. cats too, I guess, but like I don't see the cats outside. Nobody walks their cat outside. But uh, I, I've seen the change compared to a year ago. I live in the same neighborhood, exact same area, and I see the change compared to a year ago. There are way more dogs. Mm. I'd say at least like double or triple the amount of dogs. Mm. It's really quite intense. So that's like another thing I think that's more common is just a lot more dogs. It's so true. I live here in Yanamdo and I go to the Yantaru Park. Yeah, yeah. I see so many dogs. So many dogs. So many people walking dogs yeah. and they all have these cute little outfits yeah, on yeah, and jackets yeah. and hats. <laughs> Yeah, dressing dressing the dogs up, that's like a Korean <laughs> culture thing that's really popular yeah. in Korea. Or I've seen sometimes like uh, baby carriages. Yes. So you think, oh, it's going to be a bebe. But no, it's a dog. <laughs> or two dogs in the baby carriage. That's still, to me, still like shocking to have like dogs, you mm -hmm. know, like in baby carriages. That's something I've noticed. Yeah, thank you so much, Sean, no for inviting me. <laughs> See you guys next time. Yeah, take care. Hi, where are you from? Hi, I'm from Portugal. Great. Mm. What are some things that are becoming more and more socially acceptable as time goes on? So, if we start with the positives, I would say that the whole concept of international couples yes. is much more accepted. In I've, Korea? Yes, in Korea. I can give my own personal example. When I first came to Korea, um, I was dating this Korean guy. But uh, let's just say that was not the best experience. I was not overly very well accepted, no matter how much I tried. I didn't have the best experience with the family and also because they didn't want him dating a foreigner however like a few years passed by and now in my current relationship everything changed it's the complete opposite um, his family accepts me very well they had no absolutely no problem with me being a foreigner because that doesn't really matter yeah they just saw me as a person like she's kind she works hard whatever so she's right you know well you they, do work hard though and you earned that because yeah. you're studying, you're you're literally a scientist right yeah, now. You. You're in graduate school right now. Yeah, yeah. Doing and you crazy. speak Korean, you yeah. speak English, you speak Portuguese, all of them you speak mm. fluently. Yeah. That's really commendable. Thank so you. So thank you. I would say you're not even like begging for acceptance. You no. definitely earned it. Yeah, so, thank you. Good for you. Thank you, I appreciate that. But you yeah. know, like a lot of people, even if they are not in school, even if they are not as fluent, you know, love is such a beautiful connection. Those things right. should not matter, right? Guess. All I'm saying though is that you really make an effort yeah, to, thank you, yeah. to be a part of the society here. That's true, you know? I do. And, and I think if you come to a country, you cannot demand respect. That's you true. have to earn respect. That's true. But in my eyes, I think someone like you has earned it. Thank you, I really appreciate that. That's very, that, that matters a lot to me. No, because I'm all about people working hard yes, to definitely. earn stuff. Definitely. And I see you, I you definitely have worked hard, so great. Thank yeah. you. I have, I have, honestly I have, and that's one of the reasons why I went through so much struggles in the beginning, because I thought I had enough. I thought I was someone any any guy's parents would be proud of. Yeah. And I thought I was doing everything, you know, in terms of accepting culture, accepting religion, accepting everything, and I, being the best person I could be. However, I was rejected and neglected just because I was a freener. But right now, that's really not the situation, and yeah. his family now really does see that effort I put in. That's awesome. And I really, I think things changed for the better. And I think in that case, I think Korea is doing much better, in my opinion. Couldn't agree more. I totally agree. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And me personally, I was talking about this actually with my Korean girlfriend too. And mm. she was saying too that like people are more accepting of it, mm. you know, international couples. And it's more about the individual rather than like the fact that they're a foreigner or yes. not. Definitely. And that's the way I, I, I really like it. Like, if anybody works hard and becomes a strong, good person, they should be recognized for that. Exactly. Despite the nationality. their nationality, the color of their skin, you know. Exactly. You want a good person who does good in their life. It's always in the end, it really doesn't matter the nationality, it's just the person itself. And so I think Korea is understanding them much more and I'm really happy that's the case. Yeah, it's great. It's okay to be open, in my opinion. It's of course not too open where you totally lose your cultural essence, but yeah. it's great to be accepting of others and learn from each other in that sense. Anything else did you want to add in terms of this entire question? Uh, oh, the oh, cancel yeah. culture. So I feel like that somehow became normalized. The idea of simply judging someone by a sentence, by a, an image, a video. I just feel that's so wrong and I feel like that became very normalized. There should be more strict consequences for people who go out of their way to hurt others in a way that is not fair, in my opinion. I don't know, I just feel like a few years ago, not that people were nicer, but 
I felt like internet was not as strong. Yeah, and also if someone said something wrong or yeah. made a mistake, which yes. people do because we're human. Obviously. It was like, ah, he was drunk or like mm. he he had the wrong idea. But I, I agree with you these days. It's like, oh, he's a bad person. Exactly. Just cancel him. Just I, I think the culture of forgiving and having a nuanced yes. conversation is really dying. Exactly. And the idea of like, this person's a bad person, 100%, Whatever no they nuance. Say, yes, yeah, exactly. It's very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Yeah, and I can see it happening all over the world, especially in my home country of the oh, US. Oh, really? The tendency between young people to just yeah. cancel like that on the yeah. internet, is it's much higher in my opinion. I was talking about this with a friend from my hometown mm -hmm. and uh, I really like this certain YouTuber. And I heard from the friend that, oh, he hates these type of people. And I'm like, well, can you give me some proof? Yeah. And so he linked me an article. I read the entire article and Whoa. it was totally bogus. Yeah. And then he's like, what about this? And I watched the whole thing and I'm like, this is not any evidence that he hates these people. Yeah. And yet, like, they were so adamant yes. on canceling and his entire so, channel. Yes, and they will get mad at you for yeah. telling them they are wrong or they are right. not having, having the right behavior, that they will even try to cancel you, being yeah. like, are you on his side? Do you agree with his actions? Do yeah. you agree with his way of life? It's just too much. Yeah. We are focusing our energy in the wrong things. And we need just more nuance. Yes. Things are not bad. Things are not good. Yes. It's somewhere in between. There are good parts and bad parts, you yes. know? It's like you're your mother who loves you too much. She loves you, mm. but sometimes you want to be free, but you still love your mom. Mm. But you know, sometimes you wish she would recognize you as an adult and yeah. not a kid, yeah. but you're grateful that she drives you to soccer practice. Like mm. these are the nuanced types of things that we yes. need more yes. in conversation, I think. Let's not be too offended. Let's not accept too much. Let's have the right balance between yeah. being human beings who understand others and also being human beings who do not stand for the wrong stuff. Right on. Like that. Well said. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank Anna. you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Hi, how's it going? Where are you from? Uh, Paul from Canada. Nickname Paul Sol. I do Korean TV stuff. Comedian. Hello. So we're gonna look at some Korean memes, and these are through the, the eyes of an expat living in South Korea. Oh yeah. So yeah. this will give some insight to the Korean viewers as to what it's like living here as a non-Korean person. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to Grumpy Aliens, the creator of these memes. You can check them out on Instagram. Anyway, let's get into it. So there's this thing called sidewalks, right? It's actually for delivery motorcycles. Oh man, this one, this one is funny. This one is very good because I complain about this stuff all the time. What does and, it mean? Okay, so the joke is because let's say where I'm from, let's say in Montreal, motorcycles, you cannot ever, ever, ever ride on the sidewalk. Or yeah. The police will arrest you right away. It's over, you know, you can't. And you'll lose your license and that kind of stuff. So, but in Korea, the, <laughs> the motorcycles are always mm. on the sidewalks and it's super dangerous. So for us, we always like complain. So that's why it's really funny because the joke, <laughs> it implies that the sidewalks are, are just for the motorcycles. That's so why do you think that this is like societally okay? <laughs> that, this, this is what he does, everybody. He's like, hey, Paul, come over. We'll just crack some jokes. I'll show some funny memes and we'll laugh. I'm like, yeah. And then I come in, it's like, please do a deep discussion about Korea. Why is Korea like this? I think Koreans are more chill. I think it's a difference in culture for Koreans, I guess. East versus West. Uh, yeah, this is East versus West. I think uh, in Western culture, we treat motorcycles like cars. Yes. You know, because cars are super important, you know, but mm -hmm. I think in Asia, it's more like the person or bicycles and stuff like that are more important than the car, perhaps. Motorcycles is kind of like seen like just like a big bicycle. Mm -hmm. So that's why like riding on the sidewalk is not a big deal. You mm -hmm. know? But in Canada, cars came first and then we built cities around cars and then motorcycles came later kind of you know so then it's like motorcycles also oh, motorcycles are like a car so we treat them like a car mm. but i think in asia motorcycles are like oh it's like a bicycle so we they treat motorcycles like a bicycle i think that's the difference i see bikes doing the same thing they ride on the sidewalk and yeah. to me i go crazy when i see that right right because i was a big biker in the u.s right, right and we have our bike lanes yeah bike lanes or you have to let's say in montreal legally you have to ride your bicycle on the street with the cars not on the sidewalk but uh, yeah that's uh, that's my theory i think okay. uh we perceive 
motorcycles as cars and Koreans, let's say, I'm assuming, could be totally wrong, perceive motorcycles more like bicycles. I think mm. that's the big, that's why, that's why they're treated differently. Agreed. Yeah. I would agree with that. Mm. Smarter than you look. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay. One minute after you tried to explain something in Korean, in conclusion, I'm sorry I bothered you with my existence. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Okay. Five stars. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one is... Because it's real life, uh, I, so many times I try to explain something in Korean to let's say like uh, my wife or my wife's parents or something and in the end I can't explain it well because my Korean is not good enough so then I just like Argh! and I'm like frustrated and just give up and I, I could see I just wasted their time so this joke, why is this joke funny? Because it's true. Mm -hmm. There's comedy. truth in it. Yeah, yeah, comedy, man. Truth you need is some comedy. Truth. Yeah. You need truth for us, it's not funny. Bro, for me, like, you know me. Yeah, I like to talk about <laughs> deep social issues. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. No troubling break. the Korean youth. No. And I'll, I'll bother and just annoy my girlfriend with these crazy, like, philosophical or political discussions, too. And um, I, I, I make this roadmap out in my mind. I'm like, okay, A plus B plus C plus D. Okay, she's going to get my point now. This is the meaning to life. And I finally deliver to her, and she's like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, no. no. It's like, hey, that's all, that's all. It's okay. <laughs> but actually, even in English, she's like that. So it's the same. He tells me this stuff, and I'm, mm, no. Well, you're really good at feigning uh, interest <laughs> slash understanding. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nah, I'm just messing with you. No, no, no. This meme, I like it because yeah. it's true. Super it hits relatable. home. It's super relatable. This mm. one is real. How bad does it feel when you think you explain something well in Korean and then you see the look on your face? Yeah, yeah, the, the blank look, you know, like, mong, you know. The, yeah. Or sometimes you explain it and they, they get it and they're like, uh, you know, they're yeah. like, you know, like they get they guess what you're trying to say, and you're like, ah, that means the grammar was messed up, you know. But yeah. they still make, like, oh, mm. yeah. or they're like, like, oh, it's cute, you mm. tried. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, <laughs> 무슨 말인지 알것 같아. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, they're like, I think I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you know, right, right, right. So let's say like I'll, I'll talk to my wife and say something, and I tried really hard to explain, but then exactly where she's like, I could see in her face like. Yeah, that, yeah, put that. You know, oh look, it's so cute. It's trying. All right, let's do one more. These are fun, right? When you speak Korean and nobody praises you, didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Before, for foreigners, let's say like ten years ago, if they just said like, "Ani ala seyo," like, "Whoa, hangba jananda," you know, like always like praising yeah. foreigners for just saying like the most basic of things. But these days, because on TV, there's so many like incredible amazing foreigners that speak like godlike Korean that now if you speak you know just good Korean or whatever they're like yeah <laughs> it's normal yeah which is actually the reaction that should be right actually that's the correct reaction right. don't be like oh my god you're incredible they just be like yeah that's yeah. normal yeah right it's one thing if you like explain why you like Sigmund Freud oh yeah okay and you explain this in Korean and, and then they compliment your Korean but that's like it's another thing if you're like oh 안녕하세요 and they're like oh <gasps> oh you speak Korean so well I'm like I didn't say anything yeah, right 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 you know? yeah so some people can like take pride in this and like get, feel like like really good after hearing this compliment but it's not really good because all that's saying too is that Wow, for a foreigner, you're really yeah. good at Korean. Right. Whereas our goal for people who are living here a long time should just yeah. be like, oh, wow, that's a good point. They're listening yeah, to yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. The fact that you're speaking Korean right. shouldn't even be right. a weird thing. Right, right, right. We just want to be normal, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the goal of foreigners yeah, living goal. here yeah. long term is yeah. we want to just be like everyone else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But these days, however, what's interesting is that say like when you when you're on TV, then they've been interacting with foreigners that speak really good Korean for like a while now. So like when they meet people like me where the Korean is like, yeah, you know, there you could see it's like, um, they are not impressed. So these days it's changing, it's changing, I like it. But this meme, yeah, it's re relatable, I like it. Right on. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for reviewing these memes with me, Mr. Paul. Yes, I'm a professional meme reviewer. All right, and I hope you guys don't take offense. This is just comedy. This is just honest conversation. Of course, we love being in Korea. Yeah, guys, definitely check him out too on Taeyeon Weigugin, very popular TV show these yeah, days. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Hey, thank you so much. It was so much fun. All right, bye. Yeah. Hi, what's going on? Where are you from? 
I am Christina and I'm from America. Great. We're going to get going here with some Korean memes. It may be a little exaggerated, yeah. but I think they're hilarious. Yeah. Let's get into it. Let's go. When you turn on the tap and the water comes out of the shower. Oh my gosh. Can you relate to this? I related to this so much because like when I first came to Korea at my apartment, I never saw that kind of setup before. Mm. So like I didn't even know how to work it at first and it was so like awkward to like mm. take a shower in the whole bathroom and everything got wet. So it took like a little bit of adjusting yeah. at first, but yeah. oh man. Yeah, this is like a definitely Korea. <laughs> a culture shock. Culture shock. Yes. Yeah, this is this was like one of my first culture shock Me too. moments when I came to Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the U.S., at least from what I know and what I've seen, mm. there's a bathtub where you yeah. go in to take not only a bath but a shower too. Exactly. So the water is automatically separated. There's a shower curtain yeah. which doesn't really exist here. Oh, and yeah. I remember my first apartment also when I took a shower, it didn't really like steam up like um, in the in the bathroom. So I miss like taking like a nice hot shower in America with mm. the curtain because it's a small area so it can get really like hot and warm. Mm. But yeah, definitely this is uh, <laughs> the Korean life. Yeah. Have you ever like got yourself wet because you forgot that the, 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 the shower head was turned on? Yes, yes. Yeah. I've done that a few times, especially when I first started um, taking showers with it. I would forget to turn it back onto sink. And then like I go to wash my hands and then I get sprayed on by water. Yeah, I've done that quite I'm a curious, few times. I'm curious if this happens to Koreans too, or are they just so used to it by now? Uh, yeah, maybe they're used to it. Or maybe mm. like if they're tired or something and they're just like, you know. Not paying attention. Not paying attention, not thinking, they make it. <laughs> they, get they make wet. the mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's go to the next one. All right. Me, after I use Google Maps, we're in between like five mountains with trees everywhere. Oh, yep. I can relate to this like crazy. Like, oh, really? Do you have a story? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have a popular video on this channel where I mm. speak with these young Korean students who speak English and Korean really well. Mm. And I was supposed to go to Gyeonggi-do to meet them to their oh. school to film with them. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, don't use Google Maps. And I was like, it'll be mm -hmm. fine. Like, I live in Seoul. Google Maps is fine. No. And, and sometimes it is. Sometimes it is fine. Yeah, sometimes. These days, I 100% use Naver Maps. Uh, okay. But at that time, I, I was looking up the school and I looked up the subway. And he was like, yeah, it's about a 15-minute walk. So it's like, it's fine. The, the, sub, the, the Google Maps is like pointing me in the straight line. I walk through the line, there's like construction, there's like a hill, there's several gates that I have to illegally jump over. Oh yeah. no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then I have to go up this elevator, then down, and then, oh, it's just the worst. He's like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. He kind of got mad at me because it's like, I told you not to, but right. that was probably the last time I yeah. used Google Maps yeah. in Korea when it was like important. Yeah. yeah. Google Maps work in like other countries. Mm. Um, and in the US, it's a fantastic. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, you have to use Google Maps. Yeah, because it's American company. Yeah, and like it works in like Japan well, like Taiwan and like a bunch of other countries. I've heard that it was, it's because of North Korea. Yeah, right? I've heard because similar they don't things. Want, yeah. They don't want a lot of that like information, you know, easily, easily accessible to, you know, others to find, so. Yeah, I definitely. I use cacao maps, so cacao or neighbor is definitely mm. the way to go. Okay, cacao. Does that work well? Yeah, yeah, I okay. like it. Well, cacao is a Korean company, so I would assume it works better than. <laughs> yeah, cacao is amazing. Cacao yeah. is like the Korean Google, you know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Everything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I definitely I use neighbor maps exclusively now. All right, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you. I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it too, and I'll catch you next time. Bye. See you. Hi, where are you from? Hi, I am Anna from Portugal. Great. So today, Anna, we're going to review some Korean memes. Oh, I love memes. That's my thing. Okay. So how long have you been living in Korea? 
about six years now. Okay. So shall we begin? Let's do it. Let's do it. Me at Taiso. <laughs> stuff I got for 50,000 won. <laughs> That's me. I always feel so rich at Taiso. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, hey, I like going to Taiso. It's very cheap. You can get so many things. A lot of bang for your buck, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it is nice. It's like you get in there with even like 5,000 and you get out of there with like five or six different items and you just feel like, yeah, that was like money well wasted. Money well wasted. <laughs> well put. For poor people like most of us expect, Daiso is the best thing that could ever happen to us. Honestly. That's very true. All right, let's do the next one. Okay. Foreigners when they walk past <laughs> each other. So to me, this means that there's some kind of like competition. Right. There's some kind of like, it's like a bad feeling towards other foreigners that are also in Korea. Right. It's almost like I was here first. Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. So many times along the years you just see foreigners looking at each other and being like annoyed and somehow you like start assimilating that too and you're like annoyed when you see someone or talking loud and you yeah. know you see them. I definitely feel this way as well and sometimes I'm guilty of it too but it's not fair. It is you not. Know? And it's almost like you're buying into the... The negativity. The negativity, you yes, know. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. we need to change that somehow. I don't know how, but we need to change that because I, in the beginning when I arrived in Korea, I thought like, oh my God, if I see another foreigner, I'm going to get really excited. There were not many people, so you'd see someone and like, oh, hey, I wonder where she's from or I wonder where he's from. Maybe he's from the same country and that was exciting, right? However, these days, I don't know, because of the amount of foreigners that came, I don't know if it's because of like, people are trying to compete with each other to be, you know, the center of attention, which is ridiculous. But I feel like, you know, especially walking between other foreigners or supporting girls, in my case you know I'm walking past them if they're with their boyfriends they're like eh. like it's just so stupid cuz I also have a boyfriend and what's up you guys we need to talk. <laughs> what's up with that honestly I, it's, it's annoying stop it let's be friends yeah okay let's go to the next one okay me after finally getting 100% and <laughs> <laughs> okay this happened to me five times <laughs> wow that's pretty good uh, but that made me suspicious as hell because I'm not good at singing I'm not good at rapping and that machine is flawed and that machine is just lying to my and face it's broken. and it hurts my feelings they need to fix it but I love Norevang and I miss it but yeah that's true I love that one okay mm. After COVID has become the new Najungi. Oh God. <laughs> Let's hang out after COVID. After COVID. Let's do this after, <laughs> after COVID. COVID. Yeah. Exactly, especially like summer plans, you know, like festivals. Like I really want to go to the Poryong Mods festival, but it's like, oh, after COVID, hopefully. It's like everyday talk now. Yeah. When COVID slows down, let's go to Hongdae, let's hang out, let's go to the festival, let's go to Jeju. It just sucks. <laughs> it almost also means like mm -hmm. never. Exactly. And it's in the same way. Exactly. So it's like, oh, we'll do it next time. It's like advanced. We'll do it later, you know. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. It's yeah. like empty words. That's true. Yeah. It's like Najungye was already like never but yeah. now if after covid is like advanced never yeah, like yeah. ultimate you know never <laughs> <laughs> okay me reading cacao messages from notifications <laughs> you like this <laughs> i am such a crappy friend because oh, no. i mean because like sometimes i'm busy with my lab stuff but i want to really reply so i see if the message is not worthy or not by the notification however when i'm at home and i'm doing nothing and i have time to reply i'm just too lazy to sometimes reply and i feel like i shouldn't do that but i feel like a lot of people would also agree with me i think you would agree with me i agree because it's like if it's not super important exactly i have my own time exactly like, even if i'm not busy it, I'm not like a computer. I exactly. can't respond immediately. If it's really urgent, of course, you can call me. Exactly. Yeah, so... Oh, but I hate when people call me, though. And I have some friends that sometimes they will just call me and I'd rather have them send me a Kakao notification. I get it. I'm not trying to be antisocial or rude. It's just like send a message and then I will see the priority and we are good to go. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's do one last one. Okay. When you suddenly use an English word in Korean sentences, Jonan hungry imida. Do you do that a lot? That happens to me too. I do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> especially, exactly. Especially yeah. as I said in my lab. Because like my seniors are talking, I'm trying to answer to them as well and as fluent as I can. You speak but to your seniors in Korean? In Korean. Like oh, wow. In Korean. It's just, it's honestly, it's a talent because at this point discussing scientific stuff in Korean is just another level of achievement that I never thought I could manage, but it's still really difficult. So wow. Everybody, just, by the way, she is actually a scientist. Yes, so. scientist, engineer, whatever. Yeah, she works in a lab. It's not, <laughs> yeah, not a joke. It's true. Thank you. That's yeah. pretty interesting. Wow. Yeah. So like when I don't know the meaning of something, I tell them like I'm trying to make 
the sentence complicated, but then I give up and I'm like, just say the word in English and they kind of get it. Uh, so I do that a lot, definitely. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much, yep. Anna, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hi, how's it going? Where are you from? I am Christina and I'm from America. Great. What is a common first impression that people have about you? And is it right? Is it wrong? And also, when people really get to know you, what's something that they find out that they usually don't know when they first meet you? <laughs> what was your first impression of me? Of you. Yeah. You were friendly. Okay. Yeah. You were not cold. You were not angry. You're yeah. pretty bright. You were just mm. like, hey, you ready to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we work together, so you That's kind true. of, you, you talk to me like right away. Yeah. Like if I'm just like walking or like I took Korean class for a semester and <laughs> before I became friends with some of the students, they like some of them told me like, oh, my first impression that you were like scary looking, that you were like kind of cold and because like if I'm not like talking, I can be kind of, um, you know, I feel like I have like slight resting face maybe mm. a little bit unfortunately mm. and um i'm kind of like a little bit reserved like my personality like i'm a little like timid shy mm. a little bit you know unless i'm like like talking with someone i'm very friendly but because of that people may think i'm kind of like cold and kind of like stuck up like especially like before i dyed my hair i had like dark hair and like i don't know i just looked like a vampire people say <laughs> so like i didn't look as like approachable i think but so dyeing your hair a lighter color made you more approachable i think so yeah because people like even like on if i did a, if i was on a youtube channel people were like oh she's scary she looks like a vampire like with the dark hair and pale skin <laughs> so like i think maybe that kind of like scared some people and I think um, I'm like kind of shy, so I may not like be super, super outgoing. Or if I'm like studying or working on something, I could maybe like be kind of hyper focused. Mm. So I maybe look like really serious or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I think people get like a wrong impression first when they see like, Oh, she's posting a lot of model pictures and she's like serious and she looks kind of cold and I'm like, I'm not like that at all. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think I get that a lot. Cold person or kind of like stuck up. No, but I, I'm kind of like shy and very friendly. Mm. So mm. it's almost like ironic that because you're shy and timid, you can look as if you're colder yeah <laughs> and then people will actually be less likely to talk to you but in reality you're 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 actually very shy yeah so you can be nervous to talk to them right so it's creating right. more of a problem so it's I, I would assume you probably try to smile a lot right in order to break that kind of coldness. oh maybe that's why oh man you're like my therapist <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Like when no, I talk, because I've heard that a lot about actors who have that kind of face. Ah. Is if you smile a lot, you kind of got to be a little bit extra warm. Yeah. Because people just, you know, and this is just the way your your, your face looks. Yeah. Is yeah, that yeah. you've got sharp features? One of one of the actors that I really like, Al Pacino. Mm. Uh, he's kind of got a very rough and husky voice, mm. and he often plays like a gangster. In movies, right, right. So people think that he's a bit scary yeah. when they meet him. So he's one of the warmest and nicest guys because yeah. he has to be in order to kind of overcome that initial that image. stereotype, that image that people right. have of him. Yeah. Wow. So that's why I was asking: Are you like probably when you are trying to make a good first impression, you probably smile a lot? Yeah. And maybe that's true. Maybe Very it's not. like polite and yeah. smile like, oh hi, yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, interesting, I, I think other people who are very naturally just friendly looking at first mm. and approachable just because of the way they look they don't have to do anything differently when people talk to them they're just mm. the same way you know I'm yeah. just, I think I'm similar to you I can be a bit like mm. intimidating 
I'm tall and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. the struggles, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Oh, so many, I get that all the time. A lot of people kind of have like a negative first impression of me. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, no, I'm not, yeah. I'm not like that, I swear. Well, sometimes <laughs> maybe can help you. Maybe there's yeah, like a weird yeah. guy or a weird person that really oh, wants true. to talk to you. Yeah, it And you just help. like put that super like, no. ice, ice face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that that's good. That's a positive way to think about it. I mean, All right. it, it. Yeah, it gets you out of some annoying some situations trouble. that more approachable people uh, fall victim to. That's true. That's yeah. true. Could help me. There you go. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. Bye. See you. Hi, how's it going? Where are you from? Yo, 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 Paul So from Canada. What it is a movie that you thought wasn't going to be good, but it ended up being pretty good? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, these days I'm watching Netflix. Uh, so The Old Guard. The Old Guard is an action movie with like a strong female lead. And the story is about basically people that can't die. So it's like an action movie around that. And I really figured it would be pretty bad because usually characters that can't die are not interesting or like too strong. Mm. For example, let's say Superman for me is a character that I find super boring and I hate that character so much. So I figured like a uh, movie, an action movie about people that can't die, you try to kill them but they come back and it's like there's a bunch of them. I, uh, I was sure it was going to be bad, but actually it's well structured, it's fun, uh, the pacing is really good, the action is good, much better than I expected. I don't want to spoil too much, that's right. Yeah. I'm going to talk about it, yeah. <clears throat> that really reminds me of like One Punch Man, <gasps> where everybody thought before it came out, this is the weirdest, most unconventional superhero. Right. Co uh, concept. Com concept, yeah, yeah, yeah. comic, anime. Yeah, yeah. And it ended up being... Probably my favorite anime of it's all one, time. It's, yeah, yeah, it's one of the I think best. it's number one for me. Because he, the author is parodying those kind of Superman characters that are invincible. Yeah, so what makes One Punch Man or the Old Guard good, but Superman boring? That's the real question, Paul. Yeah, it's a real question. Well, I mean, there have been some good Superman comic books, but in general, what happens is invincible characters are not interesting. They're not. They're not relatable. If there's, there's not relatable, and if there's no conflict, then there's no story. There's no risk. There's no risk, there's no reward. There's nothing to right. gamble your True. life on or something like that. So in general, very not interesting. But characters, let's say like, if you want to compare, let's say like Wonder Woman, she's super strong, but at the same time, the people she's fighting, you know, she's, they're also super strong and yeah. there's like a struggle with her decision making and stuff, so she has good conflicts. So well, that's bro, right. Batman, Batman is super interesting. That's, that's right, because he's like a normal human. Right. With a lot of money, but, but he, could definitely die at any time and right. the people he's facing are in incredibly more dangerous than him that's you right know, in many many ways but he's able to outsmart them so that's an interesting character it's a good example of very good the example. opposite yeah 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 so. that that's an interesting character cool i'll have to check out the old guard old guard is fun uh, i mean turn your brain off it's not like oh my god deep story but i'm i'm a sucker for good action movies you know so okay. yeah, definitely check it out so my example i'm gonna go the opposite way. okay this movie, I thought it was going to be decent, and it ended up being absolutely terrible. I think everybody who saw this movie will agree. I was looking forward to it. You look scared. Yeah, like, oh, is he going to talk about it? I don't know. I think it's probably a movie I didn't see. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, the English version is called Peninsula, and the Korean title is Pandol. Oh, yeah. And I saw it this year. I saw the posters. And it was... Abysmal. Oh, yeah. One out of ten. Wow. And the sad thing is the first half of it was pretty good. The suspense, the build-up. Yeah. It's almost like there were two teams working on the movie. Ah, uh, no. The A team and the B team. Or and the rewrite. A team did the first half. And it was like, okay, let's see how it's going. They're going to do a pickup mission yeah. Yeah. in a zombie-infested land. Right. A spoiler good warning, premise. by the way. Good premise. Don't worry, you don't need the warning because you don't need to watch it. Right. I don't I'm, need to watch I'm that. Doing okay. you a favor. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I actually really liked the actor in it. But the second half of the movie, man, it fell apart. The concept was boring. You had so much potential and they just ruined it. I know. Yeah, and I, I won't give it away, but um, 
we read uh, a lot of reviews after we watched the movie right. and it just confirmed everything we were that, feeling. That's and bad. Yeah, it was just such a disappointment. And it was actually the sequel to Busan. Oh, yeah, yeah, Train to Busan. Which was one it's of super my good. favorite yeah, yeah. zombie movies. So good. And, uh, yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. Korean directors and Korean movie makers really make zombie movies yeah. well. But not this time. <laughs> oh, like Kingdom. Kingdom is a super good uh, zombie. It rocks. It's so good. Yeah, it's Kingdom awesome. is also super good. Yeah. Best movie you saw this year. You don't have to go too into it. Just say what it is and one or two sentences as to why. Uh, the best one, yeah, probably it will Kiss Kiss Jung for sure. Parasite. Yeah, that's a good one. I saw that one time with English subtitles and one time without. Yeah. And it was different. The first time you saw it, was it with the English subtitles? Yes. Okay, and. Without was the second time. For me, it was Hereditary. Oh Came yeah, what is that about? Two years ago, horror movie. I love horror movies. Definitely check out Hereditary in Korean. It's called Yujun. It's on Netflix. Ah, Yujun. I've heard about it. Check it's... that out. Hope you guys enjoyed our movie talk. Yeah. I'm Sean. <laughs> and I'm Paul Soul. See you next time. Yeah, take care. Bye. Hi, how's it going? Where are you from? Hey, what's up? I'm Anna from Portugal. So Anna, what are some expectations of Korea that you had before coming to Korea? Mm -hmm. And how are they different now? The biggest one I must mention is definitely the whole big deal with like North Korea. Yeah. Obviously, it's still a big deal. Uh, the thing is that before I came and while I was trying to convince my parents to let me come and I was organizing my documents and information and whatnot, yeah. my parents were so scared and they were like, there's no way we are going to let you go to a war zone. There's no way that's impossible because a lot of people are not informed outside of Korea about yeah. this issue. So they always think automatically, you know, they see North Korea on the news and they think, oh my God, they are trying to bomb South Korea again because I see this kind of news outside, you know. That's so true. That's exactly the same news that we are exposed to yes. in the US. Yes, it's the same then. Like in Portugal, I would see like, new, you know, new missile like uh, test or something. Right. And my mom would panic and they were like, are you sure you want to go there? Like what if like this, the war starts? Look at this. They're already attacking and stuff. So it's very ignorant, but that's the knowledge that people have outside of Korea. Exactly. So I thought that way and I thought that, I, you know, I was very scared. And when I arrived here the first time, which was a miracle because I don't know how I convinced like my parents. Yeah. But when I arrived the first time, I remember that I received the like government alert message. Yeah. And uh, I literally sh thought that I, we were being attacked because I didn't, yeah. ne I never heard that sound in my life. Yeah. And I thought, oh, sh this is how I die. I was looking at the sky. Where are the missiles at? Let me say goodbye to my mom. But then everyone was like really calm, walking. And then it was just a Mise Monji message. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. That's so but funny. But I really thought I was going to die in that moment. And then from that moment on, as I kept living my daily life. You realize that people do not care yes, at all exactly. about like, North Korea. No one is scared. No one is taking food home to save for a possible attack. Right. No one is running around crazy. Ah, it's so true. But then I guess at the same time, like, if something were to happen with yeah. North Korea, there's not a lot that South Koreans can really do. That's like, true. where are they going to go? This is their home. That's true. So, I, mean, I also feel like, too, if, if they attack here, it's like, they hurt themselves as well. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's just something that cannot happen. Like, if they attack, they are done. However, Koreans cannot do anything about it. And Jeju is not going to save them either. So. What do we do in that situation? We just have to keep on mm. living our daily lives and expect and hope that no one crazy enough there presses a button, honestly, at this point. That's so. exactly right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So much. Yeah, thank All right. you. Bye bye. Bye. Another cultural difference, not necessarily a, a mistake that, that, uh, that foreigners make when they come to the US, but uh, Unlike Korea, our public transportation system isn't quite as comprehensive. Yeah. So I find that a lot of people need to drive to, to almost wherever they go. Unless they, unless they live in a very large city you know, where, where public transportation is a little bit better, people need to drive everywhere they go. But if you don't have a driver's license, then how are you even supposed to do that? Yeah. And even if you do have a driver's license, I know that I have quite a few friends who have their driver's license, but they never drive. Yeah. So they have so little experience despite having their license that you know, it can be a little bit nerve wracking or a little bit of a, of a worry when they travel abroad that they're gonna need to drive because it's almost required. Ah. But they, you know, It'll make them a little bit nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've yeah, got to yeah, do yeah, this yeah. when they go abroad. 
Oh, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. So maybe like some of your Korean friends, they even have their license, but if they were go to, to go to the U.S., they would have to drive because it's just so large and like spread out. Yes. But yeah. like them having to like drive and they could technically rent the car, but it could be very like nerve wracking and it could create for quite a embarrassing and even like dangerous situation. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And I mean, luckily, you know, here in Korea, we drive on the, on the right side of the road. But if you're coming from, you know, Japan or the UK or, you know, a, a place where they drive on the left side of the road, yeah. that could really be potentially dangerous because, there you, go, yeah. you know, you're in the mindset of, oh, I'm supposed to be driving on the left side of the road. Yeah. But really, you're supposed to be on the opposite side of the road and that can definitely lead to some problems. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. The one I can remember the most is I was buying bread just from like a little stall outside my office. Yeah. And the lady working there asked me, do you want me to heat it up? But she asked me in Korean. And at that time, I really didn't speak Korean. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. what did you say? And she repeated herself so many times until I finally understood. And so I felt really sorry to her. Oh, I can't speak Korean. So I said, Mianhe <laughs> <laughs> to her. And at the time I thought, oh, Mianhe is a really polite thing to say. Because uh -huh. it's like, sorry, right? Yeah. But no, it's Panmai, yeah. which you shouldn't say to anyone that's older than you. And she was an Ajima. Um, so she got a little bit offended. Yeah. But I didn't understand why. Um, mm. And it was just like small language things like that that I didn't realize at the time were probably pretty rude. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Bye. me. Bye. Bye. Another kind of cultural mistake I made when I first got here was trying to small talk with a lot of people. Mm. Be like, hey, how's the weather? Yeah, hey, hey a lot of uh, buses going by today. You're talking to the guy at the bus stop, you know? Sure. It's just, uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I come to find later on that they're not being rude. It's just like, like we were mentioning earlier, it's just like they're not used to talking to strangers in the street. Whereas in the West, it's totally normal. Is that the same in Canada? Like you can be like, hey, do you know what time it is? Ugh, nice weather, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I generally don't like small talk. Mm. And so it's kind of a blessing being here and not having to, <laughs> you know, stand in line in the grocery store and chat up a storm. I mean, sometimes I, I, do, I do enjoy it, but most time, like most Koreans, this is where I feel very Korean. I like to get in, get my stuff done and get out. You know? Right. So um, it's nice that way. But yeah, I think generally speaking, Koreans don't small talk. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, how's it going? Where are you from? Good to be here. Uh, my name is James. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. So you told me earlier that you've traveled to both Japan, China, and obviously now you're living in Korea. Right. I'm so curious about the biggest differences and the biggest similarities between the three countries as someone who has been to all three places. I've also been to all three places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just want to talk about that a bit with you. Koreans tend to more easily criticize their own people and their okay. culture. Mm -hmm. um, meaning it's very rare for a lot of reasons in China, for example, like the Chinese people will not criticize their government and Japan probably sort of around the same level. They're very reserved and conservative, in, relatively speaking. Hmm. Uh, uh, I think there are a lot more similarities and differences, mm -hmm. but the differences can be quite stark, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes to uh, openly speaking about certain taboo subjects. right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, tiered. In China, it's none of it. They have zero tolerance for it. Japan is a little bit more open. Uh, however, I think it's more of a, it, from a conservative standpoint that they choose not to, to speak too openly. Whereas okay. Korea, I find, speaks very, can speak very openly about um, you know, certain topics that- Government, things they don't like. Politics, religion, um, you know, that sort of thing. Um, there are, there are still improvements to be made. There's still topics that should, I think, be more open uh, in here in Korea. But relatively speaking, I think it's a lot more free when it it's comes to speech. Very interesting. Speech. Yeah. I love free speech. Me too. So I love that about Korea. I love how they organize themselves. They get into a group, then they go to like city hall or another important area right. where government officials are. 
and they protest right. and they really fight for change, that is awesome. Absolutely. And I think that is something you shouldn't take for granted because not a lot of governments in the world will tolerate that. Mm -hmm. So I like that Koreans are very open and very critical of their government and even other governments around the world, they speak openly. At least my Korean friends are like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could give up that free speech. Yeah, it'd be very, very hard. It'd be so hard. Yeah, it'd be very hard. I'd have to be like, I don't really like it. Never mind, everything's okay. Like, <laughs> right. I think there are topics here that are socially taboo. Like what? Um, you know, people don't talk about sex here. Uh, True. At all. Uh, whereas in North America, we, I mean, with my group of friends, maybe it's, it's, it's isolated to that. But, you know, we talk about sex, you know, pretty freely, open. Every second of the day. <laughs> <laughs> think about it every second of the day. Okay. Um, no, that's not true. Um, but, yeah, I think... <laughs> How do you reconcile the fact that you just said Korea is the most openly critical of their government? Yet at the same time, they don't speak their opinions as much as the West. Yeah, so it's it's relative, right? It's all okay. things being relative. So I think in terms of this area, the region of the world, uh, I think Korea is probably one of the most progressive, uh, liberal, open-minded uh, sort of uh, cultures. But still pales in comparison to to where you're from. To where I'm from originally, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the 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 biggest similarity between. I can speak more to Japan and Korea, uh, but the respect for other people's things and personal space. You know, as you know, when you go outside, you can mm. not care about where you park your car or leave your <coughs> laptop if you go to the washroom and that mm. sort of thing. And Japan is on another level. Yeah. You know, very, very, very safe. Uh, safety, I know, is a is a is something that people really look to Japan and Korea uh, for, but. As leaders in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. But just in, I think it boils down to respect for other people's um, kind of personal space and you know uh, possessions. So. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have you ever met any K-pop celebrities? Yeah, as an actress and model, like I've yeah. worked on K-pop music video shoots. Um, the latest ones was uh, Somi. What you're waiting for. Oh wow. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So cool. Fun on that set. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean. You can't have a conversation about modern day Korean culture without mentioning K-pop. But how popular is K-pop actually here in Seoul? How much influence does K-pop actually have on people living here? Today we're going to explore some of these topics by speaking to some people who live here in Seoul. Let's go. Hi, where are you from? I'm from England. Amongst your Korean friends and amongst the population, how popular is K-pop actually in Seoul? A lot of my Korean friends that are the same age as me, like they listen to it casually. They'll hear some songs that they recognize, but they might not know like which band did it, or they'll just be like, oh, I know that song. But if you are a teacher, then yeah. your students will be absolutely obsessed with it. I can totally attest to that. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. Like yeah. one of the only ways I could get some of my students to talk was like, what is your favorite band? Who do you listen to this one? And then like they'd introduce new bands or new songs and I'm like, this is too much. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so true. Hi, where are you from? Hi guys, my name is Bart and I am from the Netherlands. I think very popular. You think so? Yeah. My wife is is very into underground music, like techno. She also really enjoys listening to K-pop. She thinks it's amazing, the choreography, the people, they look amazing, the yeah. voices, they sing. And I think a lot of Koreans have that. They, they just like K-pop. It's part of the culture. Hi, where are you from? I'm from Germany. Or I've attended some um, events yeah. that were K-pop related. Yeah like award shows obviously there were was a huge amount of people like oh, going crazy for yeah. their um, yeah for their idols and there were like 40,000 people and obviously most of the people were young Koreans and there you could see wow it's really popular like at events like that you realize it yeah but on a daily basis like between my friends and like my daily life yeah your job and your work oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Mm. So, why do you think K-pop has become so popular these days 
abroad because <laughs> korean you know it's so normal here mm. but like abroad it's like it almost seems like it's more popular oh definitely <laughs> yeah. yeah why what do you think people are connecting to so much with k-pop i think it's manufactured to be likable it's manufactured mm -hmm. to be accessible it's manufactured to be something that you want to find more about mm -hmm. like when i was getting into it and i saw these bands that like they could dance really well they could sing really well it was all very like glamorous mm -hmm. to look at and it was something that very was like very interesting at the yeah. time because in contrast you had Western pop artists who production value was still really high, but yeah. it wasn't necessarily quite as eye-catching. Everything is to the max level. Dancing is to the max level. Yeah. Singing is to the max level. Image is to the max level. Hair, everything. Yeah. Choreography, music videos, yeah. outfits that they wear <laughs> that complement each other. I haven't really seen any other countries take it this seriously. Like no, it's their like, purpose in life. To do this. So if you compare K-pop groups especially to Western groups, yeah. the biggest difference I would say is the performance. Okay. Uh, you can clearly see that uh, K-pop idols train really really hard for like a perfect performance. Yeah. As a team as well, like they are great as a team. I think uh, in the Western culture you don't you don't see that much, like yeah. even boy bands or girl groups. And you can be part of it, and it's yeah. quite easy. You don't have to look perfect yourself, you just have to be into the music. Yeah. It's it's like a lifestyle also. It's not only listening to the music, it's, you can dance on yourself, you can meet other cable bloggers, you can collect whatever the, the, the items that the entertainment companies make for <laughs> the fans. It's just being part of something. Have you ever met any K-pop celebrities? Yeah, as an actress and model, like I've yeah. worked on K-pop music video shoots. Um, the latest ones was uh, So Me, What You're Waiting For. Oh wow. Uh, that was a lot of fun. So it cool. A lot of fun on that set. Yeah. Uh, we had to dance a lot. And it's a fun, upbeat song. And So Me was absolutely lovely. You met her. And yeah, of course we filmed with her. And then uh, Saw You from Sister. Yeah, she wow. just made her comeback. And with her we filmed for her new um, music video as well. That's so cool. It was a lot of fun. I always hear that they're very kind. Yeah, they were very, very nice. Both of them. I think the most memorable for me was probably G Dragon. Oh wow. Yeah, I think it was just he was really eager to talk and chat, like just mm -hmm. in general. He's very fluent in English, and he was very interested in just like talking to me and my friend at the time. Awesome. He's he's a good guy from what I could tell. Thank you so much. Oh, no worries. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye bye. 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 You watched all the way to the end. You're amazing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.